G'day, it's Fugitive Australian Journalist Shane Dowling from the website kangarooecourtofaustralia.com. Now, today I've got a special treat. It's probably one of the most powerful videos I've ever published. You're going to see the New South Wales ICAT Commissioner, John Hatsagos, calling out a lie being told publicly by the chairperson of the National Anti-Corruption Commission Committee, who are reviewing the legislation that's gone before Parliament. They've called for public submissions. They've got over 100 people who have supplied submissions. I've supplied submissions. They haven't published mine at the moment. But the chairperson, Linda White, Senator Linda White, told a huge lie at the beginning of a question. Now, it's a lie that I've called out last week where I accused a Federal Attorney General, uh, Mark Dreyfus, of cooking the books. And I published an article on the 10th of October 2022, and that's how it starts off, Federal Attorney General Mark Dreyfus uh, cooks the books, uh, trying to justify private hearings, which are in effect sec secret hearings. The legislation states, as it is, that uh, they have to have private hearings except for exceptional circumstances, which means it'd be rarely, they'd rarely have uh, public hearings, which is exact opposite pretty much what uh, the New South Wales ICAC does. And what uh, the Attorney General was uh, promoting a lie, saying, well, look at the New South Wales Independent Commission. They only have 5% of their hearings uh, in public. The rest are in private. Well, that was a big lie. I investigated it. I approached the New South Wales ICAC. I uh, spoke to the media person via an email, got a response. They gave me a copy of their report or gave me a link to it. The New South Wales ICAC latest report, which is a 2020-2021 year. And the figures showed that it was a big lie by the um, Attorney General trying to use that to justify private hearings at the Federal National Anti-Corruption Commission. And today, the 19th of October 2022, at the hearing for the committee, uh, for the National Anti-Corruption Commission legislation, the chairperson Linda White put it to the New South Wales ICAC Commission, John Hatsigos, I probably pronounced that wrong, I apologise. Um, she put him to him in a question, and she started off the question, oh, New South Wales ICAC only has 4% of their hearings publicly, and went on to ask a question about private hearings. But the New South Wales ICAC Commission, John Hatsigos, he called out that lie straight off and uh, started crunching the numbers and pointed out it was, you know, where, where did she get that figure from? She didn't try and answer. She said, oh, well, uh, please just address the substantive part of the question. So let's have a listen to it, uh, the to and fro at the National Anti-Corruption Commission Committee hearing today on the 19th of October 2022. My question is, uh, only around 4% of hearings undertaken by the New South Wales ICAC have been in public. What, what role in your experience or in the Commission's experience do private hearings play as an investigatory tool available to the Commission? Well, first of all, I don't know where you get that figure of 4% from. Um, if you look at the extent of what we do hearings, about 40% of the hearing time, um, just over 40% actually, is done in public. Um, now, if you're talking about what percentage of complaints that we get end up in becoming public hearings, full investigations, it's less than 1%. So, all right. So, if I've got the figures, the wrong, statistics which sure. which I'm aware of, I'm not aware of whether where the other figure comes from. Okay. Um, Apologise. Let me just. Can, it, okay, can you well, address just, the substantive part of the question, which was, do private okay. hearings play an invest? How do how do the private hearings play an investigatory? How, how do they work, as far as you're concerned, well, in terms of investigations? They're called. Well, first of all, they're called compulsory examination. They involve bringing uh, persons in, using the commissions coercive powers and ascertaining what that person has to say about particular matters the subject of investigation. Um, it's usually for the Commission to obtain additional information supplementary to the information which the Commission has already acquired in the course of the other powers that we've exercised, such as telecommunications intercepts and um, surveillance, uh, controlled operations and so on. Um, at the end of the process of, of compulsory examination, we sit down and we make an assessment as to where the matter is to go. Um, it may be that the matter will not proceed to a public hearing. It may be that it does, but a judgment will be made at that point. So the compulsory investigations 
the, the compulsory um, examination may ultimately reveal, for example, that the threshold is not reached for serious corruption or systemic corruption, in which case the matter will be referred, most likely be referred on or terminated. On the other hand, it may reveal that serious corruption or systemic corruption is, in our view, um, quite likely, in which case we would then, go to, we would then have to make a decision about going to a public hearing. So you heard that. You could see Linda White at the end when uh, John Hatzler Goss has called out that lie, the 4%. He didn't use the term lie. Um, that question has obviously uh, been written, I suspect, by the Federal Attorney-General, Mark Dreyfus. And instead of 5%, he's changed it to 4%. I believe that figure comes from the fact that they've had 85 compulsory examinations where they call witnesses in to be questioned and they've had three public hearings. And he's crunched those numbers and came to a figure, oh, they only have 5% uh, of the hearings public. Well, those compulsory examinations, and probably 15, 20, 30 of them make up the people who actually go to the public hearings to give evidence, and they do the compulsory examinations first hand to get uh, a lot of the evidence locked in. Um, so to make out there somehow public hearings is a big lie, and you can see today the New South Wales Anti-Corruption Commission Commissioner John Hatzegos called it out and said, I don't know where you got that figure from, and Linda White could not answer. She probably didn't even know, like I said, I believe that question came from uh, the Federal Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus. He probably just slipped a question and said, hey, he asked this question. They were trying to get him to either ignore it, not address it, and that, by that way they would uh, argue later, look, he didn't refute it, so it must be true. Um, I, I suspect that's what their game plan was. But the fact that he did refute it ended up being very embarrassing for him. And we need to look at that because uh, if the Federal Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, has to perpetrate a lie publicly uh, to try and justify private hearings, secret hearings, and then he's got the chair of the National Anti-Corruption Commission Committee to do the same, Linda White, uh, if they need to be telling lies, deception and deceit to try and justify the private hearings, they know they're not justified in the first place, so they know they're telling lies. And I think it's something that Prime Minister and all the Labor Party uh, MPs and Senators should be having a good look at. They can cross the floor and vote for a true independent uh, Commission Against Corruption uh, that's going to have most of their hearings public. Now, it's worth watching this next question by Senator David Shoebridge in relation to the benefit of public hearings and the response from... Uh, Commissioner John Herzogos, who basically says, I don't know how they're going to have, make findings of corruption in private hearings at the end. It's worth watching just for that because that throws a hand grenade into this argument that uh, most of the hearings should be private. They certainly shouldn't, and it's a bad joke to sort of argue that they should. So let's have a listen to this question. Um, one of the arguments that's put in favour of public hearings is that a public hearing ventilates an issue often witnesses, witnesses are examined and given certain versions on the public record. And then other relevant parties, maybe from the public service, maybe externally, can hear that evidence and may then approach the commission and provide them with assistance after hearing the public evidence. Can you, can you give any, um, any views on whether or not that plays a benefit in the role of the New South Wales ICAC? Well, I, yes, absolutely. And that's happened time and time again. I mean, the classic example of that was in Operation Dasher, which you might recall was an investigation which started off uh, in relation to affairs of Canterbury Council and then morphed into an investigation uh, extending to members of parliament. So um, that all emerged during the course of the public inquiry. It um, wasn't information that we had um, acquired initially when we started that operation. So that happens. But I, as I indicated earlier, beyond the question of getting additional evidence and per, further persons coming forward, the organisation has to be accountable. And in my view, public hearings are a way of keeping the organisation accountable. Um, I mean, I... Not, um, and indeed, I differ with people who think that you can make findings against people, serious findings against people, in private. Now I'll be publishing an article tomorrow, 
uh, Thursday the 20th of October 2022. I'll have further information, other links, links to the previous article. So it's worth uh, visiting my website tomorrow and reading that. Uh, you can go there today and you can read the previous articles and make sure you sign up for the free email subscription. Every time I publish an article, you'll get an email letting you know there's an article that'll be read. And the Patreon account I set up about eight weeks ago is currently sitting at 194 supporters that helps fund me doing these videos and running my website, etc. And they've committed to $1,577 a month. Moving forward, that's going to be my main source of income. So if you could support that, that'd be great. Starts off at $3 a month, five, seven, 10, 15, 20, whatever suits your budget. Most people can afford $3 or $5 a month. And what you get for that is uh, you're playing a part in helping me produce these videos. And that obviously helps shine a light on corruption. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, please share it on Facebook and Twitter, etc. And please hit the like and subscribe button. Other than that, thank you for your time and have a good day.